it's another scorcher. We haven't had rain here now for five and a half weeks. Everyone else has had it and we, they've been promising us on the forecast and then you'd wait for it. The thunder rumbled last week and then nothing, nothing at all. It's been bone dry, everything now is drooping down, feeling sorry for ourselves. And there's more I water, the more is asking for another drink. So we've come over to the fig and olive plot. I'm gonna head down to the Great Vine Garden in a minute. But I thought I'd have a, give you a little look around, a little plot tour first, because things are just speeding on now. And I feel like if I don't show you now, then you'll be like, what's happened here, Jeremy? And too much has gone by. So let's have a little look around. And let's not talk about the manure and the compost delivery that I've had again. So the raspberries now are in full swing. I'm harvesting them like no tomorrow, but there is a few that are getting scorched. I'm gonna give this a good water today just to give the soil a good drink because I'm gonna be collecting some of these today for some nice jams. As we enter now, we've got some climbers all around the archery and this side is doing better. I think it's because the roots get more shadier and this is full sun. So I think I'm gonna to have to put a bit of a shade around that. Still not put all the sunflowers in, we won't talk about that. I've now the sweet peas in now are climbing up the obelisks, so I'm happy. The asparagus, well, the three crowns that I moaned had died by giving them that manure mulch and covering the crowns and giving them a good water for two weeks. They've all come up now, all three. So the extra crowns that I bought to replace them, <sighs> why? So I'm gonna pop them down the grapevine garden. I'll have an asparagus bed down there as well, just to tick it along. So if anything ever happens to these crowns, I've got a crown that I can take up in the autumn and transplant up, so that's the plan for those. The polytunnel, well, the polytunnel now is in full swing as well. All the tomatoes are climbing up. I've put all the strings up here now. They'll be tied into the tomatoes today. The issues with these runner beans, they're flowering really well. However, it's just too hot in here. So I think today I'm gonna to pull them out into the, into the garden. A lot of pollinators then will get, you know, get access to them. But they're blooming, but they're just not turning into beans. So I think it's just too warm in here. So we'll have a look at that another time. The ochre. So the ochre is like a three leaf, you know, three leaf plant. And I actually really like it. It looks like a three leaf clover. And yeah, it's doing really well in this polytunnel. It's loving it, but it drinks and drinks and drinks. The tomatoes down here now, they are climbing up those strings. And it won't be long before I'll be picking some tomatoes by the looks because they're all flowering. There is tomatoes already on the plant, so I'm happy about that. So I picked my last lemon off my lemon tree and also it started to bloom again. So there's more foliage come in. I can see some buds here and a little lemon here. So this is growing well in here. I'm just giving it a good soak once a week and then it does its thing. The beans out here now are flowering and they're climbing up the hazelnut. So I'm happy about that. All the corn and the pumpkins are bedding in now and more foliage is coming. So you know now they're going, they're happy in there. This is gonna look absolutely beautiful. Look at that. So all the nasturtium now are climbing over the sides and the banana plant in the middle. So it's a nice structure for the middle of the plot. As is the purple magnolia peas. So they're now coming into bloom as well. So we'll have a nice harvest and the backdrop of all these flowers, dahlias and everything else in between. These bags are working a dream. You know, they're protecting all the fruit inside there. But I've noticed this one that I didn't protect. Look, the mulberries. So I'm going to plant that next year. But for this year, I left it in a pot just to keep an eye on it. So this obelisk now is filling up as well with sweet peas. There is sweet peas galore. And right behind the obelisk is in the backdrop is the beautiful pond. Now this pond is already being used by the nature here. I've seen birds perching on this, this rock and having a little drink and it's been really nice. So I'm hoping now I'm gonna put some pond plants in the next week and some gravels and things so all the nature and all the little bugs and all can hide in there and, and mature this pond and behind you as you can see all the hostas and ferns they're coming into themselves now. This was the perfect place for the salads I have to admit they have morning sun and then it shades from this tree here for most of the intense heat so it's been doing really well and if you see god 
I have spring onions coming out of my ears and so salad. So I'm going to pick some today. I've already had the coriander and a nice curry. And then I'm going to take some rocket today and some salads and that'll be my lunch. So in the brassica overflow bed, it's doing really well. There is a mixture of kalets, beans. There's even some bush beans in here and kohlrabi, which is under here. And also some cabbage and stuff. And this is actually working really well. It's got its own little shade area at back and it gets a little bit of evening sun. So I've got some more baby pumpkins going spare and I've given some away, but I decided I'm going to put another two arches here at the front of the plot to use them up. And I just thought, why not? Do you know what I mean? I think I'll have one by here and one further down. So there'll be, you know, a series of arches and this plot then will be full by summer. So this bed that was full of all the spring flowers now is kind of had its day, you know, it's done its job, but I'm now going to dig out all the bulbs, replant this for summer, and then hopefully we'll have a nice flush as well from here from something else. The carrots in these buckets have done absolutely fantastic. They were the pelleted seed. I've obviously netted them as well with these bags to keep out the carrot root fly. But yeah, everything is just ticking on now. I'm really happy with it. So it's finally the day I'm gonna go down, dig up the garlic. Hopefully we'll have a good harvest on the grapevine garden. Let's go. So I'm down at the grapevine garden. The garlic is desperate to come out now. I've had a look, all the foliage is going yellowy brown. It's time, it's, the sun is beating down on me. So let's get that out. I've waited a long time to do this. So I'm excited. Right, so I need to make sure that I get these in the right um, name and categories because I'd obviously want to save some for seed to plant in the autumn. So. I'm gonna go get my little map thing out that I wrote out in the, you know, last autumn. And I specifically put bean canes down in between to tell me which varieties. I know that's elephant garlic, but the rest, I'll need my plan. So on here, it says that these are the Blanc de la Horn, and these were a fail. And I've got the giant Cristo here, and this should be nine elephant garlic. So let's get them out, label them up so I don't get them mixed up. Oh, that's not so bad. I think these are called the giant Christos. Hey, that's, that's what we like to see. Now these are saved seeds from last year. So my advice is to always keep your largest piece of garlic bulb and plant that in the autumn. But these aren't too bad. You know, it's been a good year for me this year for garlic. I have to admit, the first time I've succeeded. Cristo. So these are called the Blanc de la Hon, I think, or something like that. Don't quote me on it now. These, oh wow. So these are from Malvin as well and God, look at them. I am just absolutely over the moon. Now always, never pull your garlic, you know, if you can't, wow, look at that. You know, unless the soil's really loose, like it was in here. Um, make sure, I think this was gonna be a jumbo one as well, a jumbo one. Yeah. Make sure the soil's loose if you're gonna pull them out because you want them to ease out gently, shake off the soil. It's really funny how some can be like that and some can be like that in the same bit, you know, same conditions. Look at that, perfect. Blanc de la Hong. Now I don't know whether or not to dig up the elephant garlic or keep it in for a couple of more weeks. Let's have a little dig down and have a look. Okay, so they're bulbing up still. So the late foliage is still a little bit green. I think I'm gonna leave it this in for a week or so just to bulb up a little bit more. There's no rush. 
So when you take the scapes off the elephant garlic, you do want to leave it a good two or three weeks after that. You take off the scapes, the energy then is diverted back to the bulb and that should swell up a bit more. So I'm going to do that if only, you know, I only took them off about a week or so ago. So there's no rush, but I'm really happy with this harvest. Now, the one thing you must remember to do is to replenish the beds. Now, you have to remember that this garlic has been in here for months, depleting the soil of its energy. So, a nice little mulch of manure on the top now. And the next thing I plant in there will have a good feed. So now it's all mulched over this side, obviously to the other side as well. This now will be planted up for some kales, Cavalo Nero kales, and also I've got some purple sprout and broccoli. So always have something to plant straight in and yeah, make sure you use that bed well. So this now will overwinter a bit. I won't put garlic in this this year and I'll move it over to the next side. So I think the top of the plot is definitely the way forward for garlic, absolutely definitely the right way. It's drier up here, a lot more sun, and they seem to benefit. I had them in a bit more of a shady area last year and they had loads of rot, but I just realized that there is some garlic still left on the plot. Inside the grapevine, I can see a scape. So I got a feeling that when I harvested the elephant garlic last year, one might have stayed in the bed and here it, and here it is. So I think I'm gonna harvest that and we'll have a look how it is. So this grapevine is now in desperate need of a prune because there's so many bunches of grapes on here and I don't need that many on this plant. But I'll do that now, tomorrow. Yes. There we have it. I knew it. So yeah, we've got an extra elephant garlic. Lovely. This will be roasted tonight for my tea. So another idea is as well is, is that once you put the mulch on, if you're not going to use the bed, in this heat, pop a bit of plastic over it now as well so that it keeps in the moisture, doesn't dry out and make a massive crust. And yeah, just keep that bed nice and healthy, ready for when you want to plant into it. I know the first thing I'll be doing when I get home is I'll be slow roasting a big bulb of garlic with some salt, pepper and some olive oil in the oven and then smearing it over some nice, fresh, thick chunky bread and that's one of my favorite things to do with garlic so if there is anything that you can suggest i do with this garlic pop it in the comments below because i'm looking for some more things i can use this garlic i've never had a bumper crop like this so let's use it wisely pop in the comments some little recipes or some ideas i can use with this big garlic i'm going to keep some for save seed but the rest i want to enjoy so if you do like my channel or you are liking the content that I'm putting out, don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe to the channel. It generally does help this channel grow and grow. Just by putting that like really does boost the video to more and more viewers and that helps the channel even more. So thank you very much. So 2023 has definitely been the year for the garlic for me. And I mean, look at this abundance of garlic I've already had. I've still got the elephant garlic to go in, but I mean, this is a fantastic haul. No one ounce of rot, no one ounce of small bulbs. I've had really great harvest. Now the task is to try and decide what's best to go in those beds to ensure that they're out of the bed before I need it again. And then that's the task you have to have because it might be a suitable bed for something else that, that might be in there, but might not be out in time for the next crop. So I'm gonna go back to the drawing board now, have a little think about where I'm gonna put in those. I know purple sprout and broccoli and some cavalry and kale needs to go in there, but could I move that somewhere else and use it more efficiently? So that's the plan. I'm Danny and this is The Grapevine Garden.